Dreams with Gina Gina. The news with Gina Grad. So Herman Cain, he was a one-time Republican presidential candidate and former CEO of Godfather's Pizza, which we had in the Midwest. I don't know how many other people are familiar with it. He has died from coronavirus, according to an obituary sent from his verified Twitter account. He was 74 and was hospitalized earlier this month. And his Twitter account said this week he was being treated with oxygen in his lungs. As a co-chair of Black Voices for Trump, Kane was one of the surrogates at President Trump's uh, rally in Tulsa June 20th, which saw at least eight Trump advance uh, team staffers in attendance. They did test positive for coronavirus, though no one can confirm where Kane got it. Uh, though Kane was vocal about not having to wear masks at the Tulsa rally and at the Mount Rushmore Fourth uh, of July festivities. Uh, in commentary videos for his website that aired in June, Kane called on Americans to wear face masks, saying that the guidance now shows its effectiveness. He was, uh, there was a lot of talk about him not wearing a mask, but the mask, the mask was always sold to me as preventing other people from getting you, not you not getting it. Right. So well, I guess depends. it's around other people are not wearing it. It's really other people that's not wearing masks. Not, so right. the argument I, I should be he hung around with people who didn't wear masks. Yeah. And the distinction people say, I guess, you know, now that we're breaking it down more finely these days, there's a mask and face covering. Face covering is a bandana. You know, it's a courtesy. A, a mask is an N95 that that'll keep you pretty safe. So, you know, it's it, who knows? Yeah. Well, I'm getting ready to go to Texas. Um, by the way, <laughs> everyone careful. is everyone's freaked out about Texas. But as I was telling my family when I was explaining them, I'm going to Texas. Um, California's doing worse than Texas by by the numbers I've seen. I mean, in terms of we're hotter than Texas right now, as it as it pertains to this, the news is all about Texas, but California statistically or from a pure number standpoint, you might be better off going to Texas. <laughs> Yeah, but there's, I don't there's, know. A of ways, there's a number of ways to slice that. The most recent numbers I saw was that over the last seven days, Texas and California had almost the same amount of cases, like 68,000 to 69,000. But California's population is 25% bigger than Texas's. So you can, I mean, there's a number of ways to parse these numbers, but that's that would indicate that uh, Texas is doing worse per capita. A know, little, whatever, but whatever, whatever it's, it's marginal because I think there are little lower new cases, but they're also I'm telling higher. you numbers. This could have been a couple of days ago, but there, there was sixty-eight thousand. Uh, I just I looked this morning; it was a little. It, it's 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 kind of a lateral move, is what I'm saying. Or you can Max Paddock can look see what's up there. It's semi-lateral. The point is, is all the talk is about Texas. California doesn't get the hype on the news, so everyone thinks going to Texas is bad. But if you live in California, it's essentially a, a lateral move. Now, how you get there on a Southwest jet, at least formally, uh, that may mm-hmm. that may be a different issue. You don't have to worry about that. No, well, s- speaking private. of that, this mm. no longer applies to you, at least this trip. But this might be helpful, a helpful tip for for us and for the listeners on, you know, Teresa and I have a podcast, Easy Listening, and she found this show called Rich Roll, which I hadn't heard of. And it's an episode where they have a doctor named Dr. Grieger who talks about coronavirus. One of the things he talks about is like, well, what about the horrible air in the plane? And you want to make sure those vents are off. And the doctor says, no, 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 no. You want that vent on you. You want to take your neighbor's vents. You want to point them at you. And he said, essentially, that you know they do have HEPA filters, which is very helpful. And the more air that's coming at you, it's coming off of you so the air around you isn't staying stagnant so if you can point those vents at yourself you're blowing everything away from you and it's helpful if you have to travel i actually have a clip uh, right here from uh, ritual yeah that's funny that's that's the same thing i thought of <laughs> um we have and it's 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 it, this is i think it's a lateral move we california so says max pata as of two minutes ago has almost 500 uh Confirm five hundred thousand confirmed cases, four ninety one, and uh, about nine thousand deaths. And Texas has forty two. So sorry, has four hundred thousand. Sorry, four hundred twenty three. Four hundred twenty three thousand. I I I have this thing. It I I'm, I'm I don't know if you guys are with me. If anything can come from this thing, but 
when we're doing statistics and people are like, since March 23rd, there have been 4,826 new confirmed cases, and then there's 291. I want to get into a roundup era. I want everyone to go 300, yeah. 4,000. I Four? might. Yes. Because they start with or March 27th. Yeah, they go, since the, just say, since the end of March, there was 200 deaths and 5,000 new cases. All, all, there's a margin for error. It's baked in. I understand it, but I'm swimming in, in numbers. Anyway, yep. California has like uh, three quarters, sorry, Texas has like three quarters the populace that uh, California has. And uh, they have 9,000 deaths and Texas has 7,000 deaths. I'm, I'm rounding up. And uh, they have 500,000 cases and we have 400 and change. And the, the point is, is it is pretty adjusted for population. It's pretty lateral what, we, what we're going through and what they're going through. And who the fuck knows anything about this thing? I mean, went all the way through New York, went all the way through New Jersey. Now there's no problemos over there. Now the heat was going to kill it. Remember the heat was going to kill it? Oh, yeah. That was going to save us all. It was going to die off as soon as it got above 85 outside. And now you go to the hottest places. You know, it's July in Texas and SoCal. I mean, it doesn't get any hotter than this. And now it's yeah. now there's a spike. I mean, we were locked down. It was going to go away. Now it's back. I, it, I mean, well, I and everyone's anyone... like second wave, second wave. This is the first wave, baby. I don't know if anyone knows anything anymore, but Be- all right. Before we move off of Herman King, can I make an observation? Just see if you guys agree with me or if I'm the only one who feels this way. Um, we, uh, his account, his verified account, I think Gene alluded to it. Um, three days ago, uh, uh, they have the tweet. I, I actually saw it in my timeline and was. I remember thinking like, you know, like they're, they're, they're treating with oxygen and stuff. I'm like, oh, that sounds pretty bad. He's been for three months and then at the end it says uh he really is getting better he's coming home soon he, he's he's very excited to come home i was like oh, i don't know if that's true but whatever that you know I, I assumed it was you know positive thinking that's fine and then over the that was three days ago over the next three days up till today his account and I, you know, there's an iron chic thing going on here where it's clearly not him. He's probably comatose or dying uh, at this time in the three days. The, it's, his thing is full of, uh, go past this. Just, just scroll dozens of hyper partisan, like, you know, tweets about how uh, these people are evil and these people are awful and getting people just, just, you know, touchstones for, for political, you know, uh, discourse. And I, I just feel like that's so distasteful and so gross. Like this guy is literally, dying or dead as you're posting these there's something like from last night and this morning that's so ghoulish and gross it's like who the fuck is doing that i i assume they're doing that as knowledge the guy's literally dying over the course of these three days and i just left me such a bad taste in my mouth i don't know if i'm on a soapbox or anything but it's worse than i don't know it's so disrespectful i agree like i'm picturing myself clinging to life and lynette's talking about um left turn arrows <laughs> and you, you know, your, your Twitter Potholes. feed is still full of all your the, the fucking backup beeper in the in the garbage yeah. truck at six thirty in the morning. She's like hitting all the usual spots, and I'm wondering people who don't signal, click it or tick it. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think it's in it's in poor taste. It's weird. It's <laughs> it's weird. It. it it's weird, and like it, who's thinking we got to we got to get these out while you know while the guy's fucking literally flylining. I don't. I don't. I don't know anything anymore. I, I really don't. I agree. It's gross. Sorry. Well, I'm gonna. I'm gonna just stay on uh, COVID for one more thing, and then we're actually gonna go back to Texas. So, British scientists have determined, and I don't know if Dr. Drew's talked about any of this, that there are six different types of COVID nineteen distinguished by specific clusters of symptoms. Can now, I say I've this? Not, Sorry yeah. about COVID. Yeah. Um, don't be. Don't be this person, and don't be this nation. We all know this person where someone goes, hey, this weekend we're going to Raging Waters. And everyone kind of goes, yeah, we'll see it. I'll see it. I'll believe it when I see it. You know, the people <laughs> who just go like, yeah, we're never going to do that. That just means this person fucks up all the time or is late or doesn't do anything. Don't be that nation. Like Russia's like, hey, we got a cure coming out in two weeks. We've got a vaccine uh-huh. for COVID. We're like, well, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll, yeah, wait till I have, okay. I'll believe it when I inject it. <laughs> Why don't you sober up and come back and then we can talk? It's like, yeah. you know, so Russia's that way. Mexico's a little bit that way. China's definitely that way. Sure. Like, here's North what's Korea, going on. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. So if you're like fucking Finland or something, like if you hear Finland just said, 
two weeks, we got a cure for COVID-19, we'd all be fucking chilling the champagne, Tell right? Tell me more. I heard that story four Absolutely. days ago out of Russia, which means we got 10 more days before the cure comes in. And everyone's like, ah, okay. Well, I'm not going to take the mask off just yet. Yeah. Like, don't be one oh. of those nations. We all, it's, it's, it's easy to figure out. All you have to do is say this, and then you go this nation. And if it's the Chinas or the Russias or the North Koreas of the world or the whomevers of the world, you go, okay, well, isn't that sweet? Now, can we have a competent nation verify this? Because we're not really listening to you. So, but if you think, if it came out of Canada, you'd be like, oh, oh. We're listening. Oh, it's, okay. Go it, on. It's, it's the same news. It's we're going to have a, a vaccination in two weeks. And if it comes out of Canada, we're like, this is the greatest fucking news ever. And if it comes out of Russia, we're like, we'll see. And that story broke, I don't know, three days ago or something. When the vaccine becomes available. And again, we have the entire world working around the clock, which is why they say it usually takes 10, 11 years. And now we're looking at a year and a half. Will who will you take the first round? Uh, probably, I guess so. I guess I'll just ask Doctor Drew about it, but I'm sure I'm sure I will. I'm not a. I don't take the flu shot every year, which I should do. But well, uh, that's I the don't. other thing. They said this this may be one of those yearly. You need your yearly COVID shot, a booster shot, right? Yeah, because yeah. you know, like a flu, it's the strain changes every year. What if China does come out with a vaccine? Will you take the first round? <laughs> you know, I, I I never even think about this stuff. I'm just like, I'm sure it'll all be vetted before it gets to my main vein. So yeah, the FDA has to approve it to be. I know, but what about country. but what about thalidomide? You know, like what about the seem <laughs> fine? Deep holes, you know. Yeah, thalidomide, baby. Been listening, someone's been listening to we didn't start the fire. Yeah. Oh God! I, oh right, I love that song. But that's the thing. It's like that was supposed to just be a con, you know, wasn't that like a convenient drug for morning sickness? Well, who knew? Yeah. So, I, I don't know. I mean, that was back when athletes would smoke and do commercials right. for Chesterfields and stuff like that. I, I don't know. I'm I'm not I'm not, you know, like again, like my relationship with the government and their decisions is a little dubious right now. But in this department, I'm always just line them up, give them the shots. Okay, um, I like it. Max Apata, uh, I am. A, I'm getting ready to make my pilgrimage to Laguna Seca coming up in, in uh, next week. And I, and I realize I've kind of talked about it a little bit, but I don't know who knows what, what car I'm taking. I'm taking a car that's different than the car I normally take, a little kind of pea shooter kind of a car. And uh, in the vein of uh, inspired by my trip to Chicago, where all the guys were on quads uh, buzzing up and down the street doing wheelies, <laughs> I took the thing out to just shake it out a little. Just you, you know, when you build a race car and you haven't driven it, you want to see how it tracks. Like you want to kind of let go of the steering wheel and see if it pulls to the right or pulls to the left or, or whatever. And I just uh, for thirty seconds just kind of buzz the buzz the shop, and we'll uh, we'll play a. Play a little shot. You can go to amcrawl.com and watch it, but you can just hear it here. Setting up all the alarms. Oh, there's a, there's a good one, uh, Max Pat. You can stop it. There's a good one of me going by the thing. I think it's the oh, first I'll one. I'll have to load that one up. All right. You figure it out. You're taking you're you're taking the one that looks like when kids learn how to draw cars. Yes. Like side up, <laughs> side down, side down. It's a mini little pea shooting box. But the same thrills of driving this little hollowed out little. The rims are 13 inches. Now, I don't know. Uh, Gina, your Subaru has 16 inch rims on it or 18 inch rims. It's like a 13 inch rim. It's it's a little <laughs> four cylinder Japanese box. But when people want to know, like, everyone oh, goes, how fast are you going? How fast are you going? Well, I don't know, but there's 21 other boxes that'll be right next to me going as fast as they can. And that's where the excitement comes. The The sound and this raw kind of rough feeling of having no windows in the side and no everyone's on the same tires and doing the same thing. So it's this little 
it's a it's a fast, fun little shitbox kind of grouping, and there'll be like twenty five guys out there, and they'll all just be going for it at the same time, and it's nice. every bit as exciting as the big horsepower, crazy multi million dollar class that I may normally uh, run in. It's called the uh, Different Drummer Five Ten. And then you get the whole story about this came was on a east the you know started on the east coast and the guy uh, bought it at whatever dealership and he stripped it and built it for a race car. These, these cars all have the story. This is the story starts in 1971, and all these names of all these guys, half of them are dead now. How it competed on the east coast for all those years and blah blah blah. And then you bring them here, you resurrect them, and then you you tell the story. All right, sorry, Gina. Go. Oh, we got a, we got the, we got the buzz by. Oh, let's see. This is a little better. I don't know why that car. I don't know why that. I probably set it off. You're a menace. I'm a menace to society. All right. Were you? Did you happen to do that at around 3 a.m. in uh, <laughs> Valley Village last night? Because that something woke me up. That noise, that monstrous noise, just oh. like your car, scared the shit out of me. I finally went back to sleep. And then our house almost got knocked over from I, we were very close to the earth. I've I've never I have never been prouder of myself <laughs> than when I had the earthquake. We had an earthquake last night at 430 in the morning mm-hmm. or thereabouts. Yeah, four thirty. I got up this morning, and I've been I've been pissed at this for a long time. I've been here since the seventy two earthquake. The seventy two earthquake was like five forty five, maybe six a.m. But you're still you're 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 complete. An oh. earthquake when you're up and you're on your feet and have a cup of coffee in you and are wearing something is a completely different experience than dreaming about God knows what and being waken from your sleep. You don't. When I was a kid. During the 72 earthquake, I was just a little kid. Um, I started dreaming about like war and Nazis, and I thought someone had blown up. I remember specifically, I had like it was blow, a blitzkrieg. blown us up, right? Yeah. That was my dream. And then because it didn't make sense, because if, it, if we blew up, we wouldn't just be shaking. I immediately pictured right. a giant bomb with a fuse that was lit and the fuse was like, we're shaking and then we're going to blow, you know, and that's my my brain was like trying to make sense of it when I was eight years old. And I woke up and I, it, it was dark. Everyone was completely disoriented because everyone was asleep. Then the next right. one that hit was in 94, middle of the fucking night, middle of the morning. Everyone was passed out and everyone is fucked up, you know, dishes falling from the cabinets in the kitchen and everything totally disoriented and i've said why can't we have an earthquake at noon or 1 p.m on a saturday you know what i mean and i fuck i fucking went and looked that shit up last night was 4 30 dead nuts on i mean 4 30 in the a.m is you're 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 never more out of it especially if you go to bed about 12 30 one o'clock like i do every night 4 30 i'm as far out of it as you can possibly get uh last night 4.29 4.29 in the morning. The the big one we had uh, 20 years, uh, 25 years before, 4.30. <gasps> Brutal. I, I, I looked it up. It said 4.30 in like 55 seconds. <laughs> the, the point is, is we're less than a minute apart. Like the two biggest ones we've had here in the last 25 years have both taken place at 4.30 a.m. One took place at 4.29 a.m. in fi- 52 seconds. The other one took place at 4.30. Like... What the fuck? Don't tell me that's not there's not something going on. There's all the hours. No, oh, I'm blowing the lid off this shit, man. I'm going full con. I mean, well, of all the times these things could hit, what the fuck's with 430? What's yeah. even the fuck with the window between like 3 a.m. and 6 a.m.? Why is that the window for an earthquake? Sorry. Yeah. Remember the Bay Area earthquake that hit right before the World Series in 89? Aha! Uh-huh. 5.50, right before first pitch. That's a polite earthquake, 5.15 p.m. Yes, well, that's a courteous was, earthquake. Uh, we, given all three of us, I think I was probably closest to it. It was like a 4.6. So it shook our house. It it, I mean, it was terrifying. We run in. I go, let's check on. We got to check on the kid. We run into his room. He's just sitting up because we're terrified. And I was like, oh, he's going to start screaming or crying. And I go, are you OK? Did you feel it? And he goes, it was just an earthquake. 
earthquake. So I that like is that. a California boy. He's not afraid. It's an earthquake and it's no big deal. Well, ever since I've tore apart so many houses and done earthquake rehab for a job and gotten into the bones of so many houses, I've just if you live in a dwelling that is framed with wood and has stucco or siding on the outside or anything that's even close to modern or anything that's not masonry, it's only unreinforced masonry. Mm-hmm. That is all. That is your enemy. If you're not unreinforced unin- masonry, then you're 100% fine. Apartment building from the 60s, house from the 50s, it doesn't matter. The only thing that ever falls over is the chimney. In, a, in an old mm. house, the chimney always falls over. But other than that, unreinforced masonry is it. Anything else, you're completely and utterly fine. There's nothing. And, and that's why there's never any damage here. When they go to these countries where they have to build everything out of cinder block and brick cinder and stuff block. like that, they're destroyed. Because masonry yeah. is what is what goes. It's all flexibility. That's all engineering is. Like a suspension bridge. Sorry, well, and Gina. that's the fun. That's the I- irony, I would imagine, because our house, which is all wood, and uh, you know, like when we're at work, and you know, these tall buildings at KFI, and you really feel it shake. I, I guess the more you feel it shake, the safer you are because it's moving with the earth. It's all. You know what I mean? Yes, it's all. You want to be taffy and not matza. Sorry, Gina. I know that sounds like a hate crime. <laughs> it's been said uh, many times. I know. All right. You want to me- be leavened? That's right. You want to be leavened. Let's do one more, Gina Grad. Or sorry, I cut you off on okay. your other COVID case. No, that, that's okay. Let's let's move on to this one in case you haven't heard. Is there one more seat available on that private jet? Because Joe Rogan might want to go with you. Mm. He says he's moving to Texas in search of more freedom, according to mysanantonio.com. His podcast, he said this on the Joe Rogan experience. He announced the news of his relocation from L.A. to Texas on Friday. And Rogan cited overpopulation, traffic, economic despair, and his need for more freedom among the reasons for his decision. He He's 52. He also does the UFC commentating. Uh, He reportedly stands to save millions of dollars in taxes. And just to give you a little example of that, Rogan signed a deal in May with Spotify for more than $100 million to air his podcast exclusively on the streaming service beginning September. That's according to the Wall Street Journal. The Houston Chronicle.com says, um, while the deal would be would be subject to a 13.3% income tax rate in California. Texas forgoes individual income taxes, resulting in $13 million in tax breaks. Yeah. Uh, Everybody I know that's got a couple of nickels to rub together is kind of looking toward an exit strategy. Um, I was talking to Mike August about this earlier today, uh, not about Joe or Texas per se, but kind of saying... Are we just going to keep going down this road? And then what happens when you move to Texas? But then he says Texas and some of these countries are going to secede. Like they're going to try to break it up at at, at, a, at a certain point. It'll be an interesting next. Uh, it'll be an interesting lifetime for my kids. But um, people really California and and L.A. has seen it before with productions that left town, uh, runaway production. We, we, we just, it, the exact same model applies. They just got a little grabby with the taxes and a little overregulated and they made it a little too difficult. And the people who love this country and who love ostensibly keep talking about paying more in taxes and are always very charitable on that side of the aisle, they all picked up and left. They came yeah. back to where their houses were, but they dropped off all the money and the Carolinas and Toronto, and Toronto everywhere. And, and so they fled. So if that group, if Hollywood will get on an airplane and leave to do business, eventually the Joe Rogans and the Mark Garrigas's and folks like that are just going to get up and leave. They're just, they're just going to leave. And, and we, we've proven it once and not too long ago. So I don't know why they don't have those kinds of discussions like there used to be California used to be a little bit of a monopoly. We just like, hey, where are you going to go? Like, you're not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. You you can't. It's not even not even practical. Well, you know, Mark Garagos has a private jet at his disposal and maybe the Internet 
maybe air conditioning, 80 inch plasma TVs, you porn and the Internet in general, just and, and zooming, maybe. Maybe it doesn't matter where you live yeah, the anymore. COVID lo- the, the COVID lockdowns are, gonna, are proving that you can work from anywhere for, in a lot of jobs. And you can go. So when I was growing up, if you were a Hollywood guy, you can't live outside of L.A. There's no good steakhouses or there's no good nightlife or there's no or maybe maybe you like Chick-fil-A or, you know, there's a there's a. Uh, uh, there's there's a big brand that you like. You know, it was sort of like you couldn't buy Levi's at a Sears. You had to buy Tough Skins. Well, now you just buy Levi's online. And you can go eat wherever you want. And all these places that seem kind of podunky, they're not so podunky anymore. Nashville's a big, beautiful town. Lots of good restaurants. Lots of good entertainment. And, th- and the list goes on and on. These, these places. Oh, yeah. It- Milwaukee, Kansas City. I mean, right. uh, tons of these places are great. Right. So now that all the other locales have become a little more attractive through taxes or regulation or the lack thereof and or the culture um, in L.A. and Los Angeles, uh, Los Angeles, California, are sort of on the decline. They're going to see a lot of this. And when they see a lot of it, they're going to see a tax base go like right now. 13 percent seems pretty darn good, not to the guy who's cutting the check, but it seems pretty good to California. But uh, you're going to get zero. I know 5 percent sounds low to you when you're 13 percent, but, you know, it's less than 5 percent. Zero. I sound like Nancy Grace. Now, Nancy, what would that sound like? I know that 5% sounds low to you, but guess what? I'm not a mathematician, and I'm willing to bet that you're not either. But guess what's lower than 5%? Hmm. I'll give you one guess. Hmm. Zero. Zero. That's what's lower than 5%. Yeah, sometimes I see I say things, and I realize I, I sound like the people I make fun of when I'm saying it, <laughs> in the middle of saying it. But <laughs> um, they're, they're going to get there. New York's having a problem with their heavy hitters leaving their big tax base, people getting out and going to Florida and stuff. And I think it's a f- maybe a year or so ago, but uh, Cuomo was basically just laying it out. He was like, Hey man, we need this tax money. You guys are leaving. And it's like, yeah, that's, that's kind of what people do now. Mm-hmm. And the notion of travel is so much more comfortable People, there was no Airbnb. There was no Southwest. There was no yeah. people. No one had a second house in Palm Springs or in Nevada or wherever. Like no one had any of that. And now it seems also plausible now, right? Doable. Like, it yeah. seems very mm-hmm. doable now. And California is going to have to kind of wake up to the notion that they're kind of living. 25 years ago. This is now. People work from home, travel all the time, do whatever, and there's going to be more of this. And unfortunately, it will be your tax base. It's going to be the it's going to be the people that are paying the most that are that are leaving. The, the the people you're getting the most from, you're going to get zero from. And the people who are rely on the state, they're not going anywhere. So there's going to create there's going to be a math that might not might not work out for the state. All right, Gina, let's bring it home. You got it. I'm Gina Grad, and that's the news. Gina, Gina, Grad. that was the news with Gina Grad.